Thank you. Over to you, Reva. Thank you. Thanks, Marion. Well, uh, today's parasha is a very beautiful one. It's Vayechi. And it's actually the conclusion of the book of Genesis. Vayechi, it starts with, and Jacob lives the concluding 70s, 17 years of his life in Egypt. And I don't know about you, but it fascinates me what age they used to live to. So the days of Jacob, the years of his life were 147 years. And the time came there when Jacob, or Israel, as he was called, must pass on. Now, before he does this, he decides he gives, he's going to give a blessing to each of his 12 sons. And they are, are going to get a blessing according to the role that they assign. But before he does this, he does something which has influenced generation after generation of Jews to bless their children on a Friday night like we have now in front of the candles. So before he calls his sons for a blessing, Jacob calls, thank you, Joseph. Jacob, call, and just leave that there. Jacob calls his two grandchildren. And Joseph's sons are the only two grandchildren he calls Ephraim and Manasseh. And I want you to see in this picture, this photograph that Jacob, our Jacob of Temple Israel Hillebrow has kindly put on the screen for me. I want you to notice that Jacob's right hand and left hand are crossed upon the children's heads, his grandchildren. And we are going to understand why and discuss that as well a little bit later. Thanks. Thanks, Jacob. So we'll go back to the Dorsha now. Right. Um, why would it be that he chose to bless his grandchildren? And that is Ephraim and Manasseh. Well, every grandparent knows I don't. I didn't make it. I, I, and I'm not a grandparent yet of my animal babies. But every grandparent knows, as I know Jacob does in Serona, of, of family and grandchildren, it's, it's beautiful to bless grandchildren. Why? Because in Judaism, it, it gives us, the, it's even more joy than blessing your own children because it's the concept of continuity, of generation after generation, of somehow we are part of infinity, that our souls and our spirits are part of infinity. So, but there is a further significance to Jacob's blessing. And again, there are different explanations of why on a Friday night, when we're lighting the candles, we, we bless the boys and call them Ephraim and Manash. So, and the girls, may God make you like the matriarch, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. And as I said, the boys are blessed like Ephraim and Manash. So, why? Why choose the grandchildren for this blessing? And why are they more important than perhaps saying our sons and our grandchildren should be like Abraham or perhaps like Isaac? So there are different reasons for this that I'd like to share with you. It is said that Ephraim and Manash perhaps were the first of Jewish brothers who did not fight. Abraham's two sons, Isaac and Ishmael, we know the tragedy of that fight. We know the tragedy of that separation of one family that exists even to this day. Very sad. And, and also the basis of the Arab-Israeli conflict to this very day. Baruch Hashim, we may understand one day we are one family again. The next generation, Isaac's twin sons, Jacob and Esau, were so contentious that, uh, you remember the fight, that Esau repeatedly sought to kill Jacob 
and instructed his descendants to do the same. And Jacob's sons, Jacob's sons himself, sold Joseph into slavery. So perhaps that is why when we bless the boys, we say they should be Ephraim and Manash to, to represent a break from this previous pattern. And of course, it's not only a Jewish pattern, it's a universal pattern. And perhaps that is also explains why Jacob purposely switched his hands, which is again, totally against the norm of the day. The norm of the day, as we know, with Esau and Jacob, is that the oldest son must get the main blessing, must continue with the heritage, must get the major portion of what his father leaves behind. And yet once again, here is our Jewish tradition breaking the norm because Hashem knows better than the norm that we say is a universal norm when it, it is just part of a tradition. So when, once again, that norm is broken. And perhaps this is what Jacob was wishing in his mind when he switched his hands on his grandson's head, that the previous generations where each of the brothers had fought and his own sons as well had sold Joseph into slavery. But is this natural? If we look at nature, we know that in nature, there are those animals like, I don't know if it's a, a scorpion or what, but I believe the male scorpion can even eat its own child. Then there's also the example, which is terrifying to me in nature, where the weakest of the litter is left to die and is thrown out. We know that the strongest survive and the weakest die. But perhaps this crossing over of the right hand and the left in a different way says there is a different way. That the Jewish belief is that we have to protect the weakest. We have to respect each other. The worst, so this harshness is in nature where the weakest die where power takes all and where everything is based on how much I can get. We thought this era had definitely come to a halt after the Shoah. Hitler and the Nazis were the epitome of the harshness of nature and not listening to God's laws. He ignored totally the Noahide laws, which was to respect each other. And he deliberately, besides killing Jews, who stood for protection of the weak, he ruthlessly killed handicapped people. He ruthlessly dealt with the weak. He saw transgender people as abnormal and ruthlessly killed them. So, in Judaism, one of the things we believe that we have to go against the norms and even against nature and survival of the fittest into an era where Hashem is telling us that the survival of the fittest can only be the survival of those who are the fittest morally, who follow his laws, who treats the stranger in our midst, refugee, with, with compassion and kindness, and ultimately as an equal citizen, who treats the poor, the handicapped, the dispossessed with kindness. And so perhaps that is the reason that we, when we bless children in front of candles on a Friday night, we say the, the girls must be like Sarah, Rachel, Blair, and Rebecca, but the boys 
must be like Ephraim and Manash. We're siblings, both by blood and siblings by a mutual parent as Abraham, or just siblings by God being one creator of all must dwell in peace. And therefore that beautiful song that we started with, when siblings dwell in peace. That is why we begin our Shabbat service with those beautiful words, May siblings, brothers and sisters, dwell together in peace. And I'm going to continue on this theme with further explanation of this incredible conclusion to Genesis, because it is the end of one era, and it's the beginning of another era where the Jewish nation and humanity will continue on the path over many, many, many generations to get to that peace and respect, and that way may we, both in this congregation as siblings, brothers and sisters, bound by a common love of Hashem and of goodness, and may all the siblings of all kinds in the world learn to live together in peace. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>